From the National Newsroom of the Canadian Press, I'm Lisa Laporte. Jewish students from major Canadian universities appeared on Parliament Hill today, raising the alarm about a rise in anti-Semitism on their campuses amid the Israel-Hamas war. McGill University student Claire Frankel says she's heard slogans that dehumanize Jews at her school's encampment, but believes many students are demonstrating for the right reasons. I really do believe that many students Students who are at the encampment at my school, McGill University, are there for the right reasons, are there because they care about Palestinians, they want to see an end to the war, and they want lasting peace in the region. Members of Parliament are set to start studying the issues of anti-Semitism on campuses tomorrow and will hear directly from students. The head of the Public Service Alliance of Canada says members will be encouraged to file tens of thousands of grievances in an effort to force the federal government to withdraw a new mandate. Chris Aylward says the union has already filed a series of legal challenges against the government after it announced federal employees will have to start working from the office three days a week as of September 9th. The president of London Drugs has issued a letter of apology to customers for a cybersecurity incident that forced stores in Western Canada to close for more than a week. Clint Malman says the April 28th incident is still being investigated, noting any customer whose information was impacted will be informed. A new survey says Air Canada ranks below most other major North American airlines when it comes to customer satisfaction. The poll by J.D. Power finds the country's largest carrier placed last in both business class and premium economy rankings. In economy class, Air Canada placed ninth out of 11 peers, beating only Spirit Airlines and Frontier. WestJet sat a little closer to the middle of the pack for both the premium economy and economy categories. Delta and Southwest Airlines notched the highest scores, with the head of J.D. Power's travel division saying both airlines invested heavily in staff training and recruitment. Michelle Zedekian, The Canadian Press. And a noise rock pioneer has died. If you were moshing to alt-rock songs in the late 80s and 90s, you knew Steve Albini's work. After Albini's work with the Pixies in the late 80s, Kurt Cobain sought out Albini to engineer Nirvana's Nevermind follow-up in utero, giving the band a more raw and less polished sound. Albini also engineered albums for The Breeder, PJ Harvey, and Bush. He preferred the term engineer to producer, and he fronted the band Shellac, which is set to release a new album in nine days. We're told Albini died of a heart attack. Steve Albini was 61. Jason Adams and ABC News, Hollywood. This is the Canadian Press. In sports, the NHL's Ottawa Senators introduced new head coach Travis Green at a press conference today. The former Vancouver Canucks coach says he's excited to return to a passionate Canadian market. I grew up in Canada. I remember watching Hockey Night in Canada when I was a kid. I remember playing. You know, hockey is Canada, and I think it's a privilege to coach in Canada, to play in Canada, and there's there's something to be said for winning in Canada. And there is pressure, and I like that, and that was another box that got checked. The Castlegar BC native spent the end of last season as the interim head coach of the New Jersey Devils. Rookie goalie Arthur Silvans will start in net for the Canucks as Vancouver kicks off an NHL second round series against the Edmonton Oilers tonight. And in Major League Baseball action today, the Toronto Blue Jays beat the Philadelphia Phillies 5-3. From the Canadian Press, I'm Lisa Laporte. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. For more of today's top stories, visit the Canadian Press News.ca.